Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. So today I'm going to be telling you all about my January wrap up, all the books that I read this month, which there are 17 of them. And wow, I'm just now realizing how unprofessional I look um ignore my appearance I don't always look this bad <laughs> but when I do you can be sure I'm gonna film a video looking like this because I procrastinate and um yeah that's all I don't have any other excuse <laughs> okay so I'm gonna be taking you through all the books I read in January. I had a really great reading month to kick off 2021, and I have a really big variety of books. So let me give you a stat breakdown before I get into the actual reviews. So I recently switched over from Goodreads to Storygraph, and I actually like it a lot better. And you guys probably know that Goodreads was recently bought by Amazon, and I'm not trying to support that I would so much rather support a black owned woman owned business and that is Storygraph and it's so much better than Goodreads this is not like a sponsorship I'm just really excited about it because all of my stats were generated from Storygraph so they did this all for me I didn't have to do any of the work like I usually do when I make my wrap-ups so I'm about to show you the stats from Storygraph so as you can see I read a total of 17 books and 4,347 pages. <laughs> that is a lot of pages and I've never done my page breakdown because I've honestly just been too lazy to add it all up. But thanks to Storygraph, I have it. <laughs> Here you can see the mood breakdown of my reading as well. And I think this is really interesting. So the main moods that I seem to be drawn to in books are mysterious, reflective, tense, emotional, and dark. Who's surprised? I read mostly fast paced books, but this month I did have a few medium and a couple slow. I had a couple short books and a couple long books, but most of them were right on target between 300 and 500 pages. That is the range I usually read. I read all fiction books this month. And here is the genre breakdown of everything I read in January. This gets really technical and like really goes into every genre attached to every book that I read. And I really like that it represents every single genre that I read. Um, I'm just gonna share with you my top five genres that you can probably see here. They are thriller, contemporary, literary fiction, LGBTQIA, and romance. And I don't think that's very surprising. I feel like those are my typical genres. Although I do have a few magical realism books thrown in there. And that is a new genre I discovered this month that I absolutely fell in love with. If you have good magical realism recommendations, let me know in the comments. And finally, here are my star ratings. I had six five stars, six four stars, two 3.5, two three stars, and a one star. So mostly I read really great books this month. There are only two more stats that Storygraph actually didn't generate for me, but I usually give them my wrap ups. So I figured I would still give them. I read five of these books on audio, one via ebook, and 11 I read physically. As for the authors, I read from three authors of color this month and the rest were from white authors. And I read from four male authors, one non-binary author, and 12 female authors. So now that we've done all of the stats, let's go ahead and get into the actual books that I read this month. I will start off with my one star book and that is The Perfect Letter by Chris Harrison. Yes, that Chris Harrison, the fucking host of The Bachelor and Bachelorettes. I read his smutty romance book and I have a reading vlog with all my thoughts and I think it's a pretty funny and um, really clever video. <laughs> Just to brag on myself for a minute. So I'm gonna link that everywhere. Go watch it if you haven't watched it yet. I think it's really fun and I had a fun time reading it even though I did rate it one star. So if you wanna know what this book is about, I read it for you and I went through all of the pain for you and you can just laugh at my pain. Please go watch that video or else I read that book for nothing. 
So I actually had three secret TBRs that I read for this month, which is insane now that I'm thinking about it. How did, How I, do did I do that? Wow. Wow. So in my first secret TBR, I read Jess from Books Past Bedtime's favorite books. She's one of my very dearest friends here on BookTube. So please go watch that video. I really liked comparing our tastes and I really liked every single book that I read. I think it's a wonderful reading vlog. And for that secret TBR, I read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson, Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston, and Golden Boy by Abigail. I don't remember her last name. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. That was one of my favorite books I read this month. Please, please. I don't even know the author's name. I'm a mess. I'm so sorry. So if you want my full thoughts, ratings, and reviews for all of those books, go watch that vlog. The next secret TBR that I read for was reading Matt from Matt the Page Turner's favorite books. And I read A Good Marriage by Kimberly McCright, The Bright Lands by John Fromm, and Long Bright River by Liz Moore for that video. Again, I will link that vlog everywhere, up and down and all around so you can go watch it. These three thrillers were really, really hyped for me, so I was super excited to kind of take them on. And I feel like I had kind of hot takes. Me and Matt's taste doesn't necessarily align. So if you want thriller recommendations that are a little bit different from what I usually give, definitely go watch that video as well. And finally, the last secret TBR that I read for was reading Caroline from Caroline Johnson's favorite books, another one of my very favorite booktube humans. And for that video, I read Shutter Island by Dennis Lehane, The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker, and The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I'm not gonna tell you any of my thoughts yet on any of these books because the reading vlog is coming out very soon in like just a week here, I think. So get excited for that video. Round two of me, Jess, and Caroline's collab will be coming out soon. I will put the exact date here on the screen because I don't know right now off the top of my head. Um, so get excited for three new reading vlogs of each other, reading each other's favorites yet again and to get all of my feelings, ratings, reviews for these three books. So all of the rest of the books that I have left, I just read for fun because I wanted to read them and that is my favorite way to read. <laughs> so I will be going through these books. What should I go based on? Okay, so I'm gonna go by rating, starting with my lowest rated book and working all the way up to the five star books that I read this month that were not for other videos. So the first book I'm gonna talk about is The Girl from Widow Hills by Megan Miranda. This is the last Megan Miranda book that I had to read in order to read her entire backlist. So a guide to Megan Miranda books will be up very soon. And I rated this three stars. It was definitely entertaining and I was hooked from like the very beginning. It's like a very weird premise for a thriller, but I really liked it and it really sucked me in. The only thing was the ending was very disappointing for me. I feel like I didn't have a lot of payoff. It was very just lackluster and I didn't like the turn that the story took. However, I had to read it three stars because the first like few hundred pages were really, really intriguing for me. Basically what happens in this book is a girl was supposedly swept away by a flash flood when she was like five or six years old and she goes missing like they don't know where the flood takes her and I think having nature as like the kidnapping mechanism for this thriller is so powerful and different than what a lot of other thrillers are doing so I did appreciate that aspect of it but now it's 20 years later, it's the 20th anniversary of this girl being recovered. I don't think that's a spoiler, like it's, it's literally on the back of the book. They found her after she was missing for however many days and weird things start happening. She starts sleepwalking and seeing things that she doesn't know if they're real or fake. She starts receiving threatening letters and she doesn't know if she was actually carried away by the flood back then or if something more sinister happened to her. 
Overall, I recommend this book. I think it's really good up until the very end for me. It just didn't hit, but who knows? For you, you might really like this ending. Now let's go on to my 3.5 stars. First up, we have Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. I did really enjoy my experience of reading this book. I think it was very informative and, and there was probably equal amount of times where I was like, yes, tell her, like a queen. And then the other half of the time I was like, oh, I didn't know that was like bad. So it definitely tackles performative activism a lot. Basically what happens in the story, our main character, a black woman, is a babysitter for a white family and she goes to take the little baby to the grocery store to just distract her for a few hours one night when the parents are like going through something or like fighting. And while she's at the grocery store, a white woman gets the security guard in the grocery store to try to kick her out because she thinks the child is kidnapped. And during this whole situation, a white guy starts filming it and wants to use it as some form of activism to like go viral and expose the security guard. It really goes into performative activism and how a lot of times if a black person or a person of color is just like, no, like I don't wanna pursue this, let's just go ahead and forget about it, white people are the ones not listening to what they actually want and their own emotions and wishes and they're like no 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 like you need to do this like oh my god this was horrible like don't you need to do this and that really struck a chord with me and i think that's a really important conversation because i hate the whole white savior complex thing and i don't think it's talked about enough and i think to respect people of color we need to give them their own autonomy and back up what they want instead of pushing what we want for them and i think that listening piece was addressed really well in this story the only reason why I rated it pretty low at 3.5 is because while the social commentary I thought was really, really strong, the characters and the plot itself, that's another story. <laughs> I really wanted to like our main character, but she just fell so flat for me. She barely had a personality and I really wanted her to stand up for herself and on one side, I can understand why she was intimidated by the other characters and why she wouldn't want to stand up to her, for herself. But if she's not going to stand up for herself or if she's going to be wishy-washy about it, I want her to really lean into doing that. And I feel like her character was just really confused and not well realized. I actually connected more with the like white housewife uh, who hired the babysitter than I did with our main character who we're supposed to be sympathizing with. So I thought that was a pretty big problem with the book. Also, the plot was very meandering. And while I enjoyed a lot of the situations that were presented and those were things that really stood out to me as like informative, like just the certain situations that the characters would find themselves in and how that might be problematic, I wouldn't have thought about that. So I appreciated that. But parts of the plot I felt were really, really absolutely unnecessary and just added on to kind of compound the message when it really didn't need that. I think the commentary that was provided about, you know, performative activism and being a white savior and things like that were really well done with the main grocery store plot and all the other stuff, which I'm not going to get into because it would be spoilery. I didn't think it was really necessary. Overall, it was a good book. It was 3.5 stars for me, and I don't think that's bad at all. I think if you're wanting to consume some kind of content about performative activism and kind of get a feel for what that is without having to dive into nonfiction, this is a really good resource for that. But the actual characters and story, not the best. Another 3.5 star book I read this month was The End of Her by Sherry Lapina. Basically what happens in this book is a guy is just kind of living his life. He seems to have the perfect life and everything together. He has a great job. He's making a shit ton of money. He has a beautiful wife who just popped out two twin daughters for him. Like he is living the life and he walks into his office one day and there's a woman from his past who basically confronts him and accuses him of murdering his first wife. And she starts blackmailing him and saying, if he doesn't pay her this exorbitant amount of money that he actually can't afford, which 
two baby twins, then she's gonna go to the police and have them reopen the case and he might go to jail for a murder that we don't actually know if he did commit or not. So this one kept me on the edge of my seat. It was a really effective domestic thriller. All of the characters are very nuanced and like you kind of hate them, but you kind of understand them. And I love that like very human nuanced way that characters are written in a lot of Sherry Lukina's books. The first 50 pages of this book are wild. And the last 50 pages of this book are wild the only thing was in the middle like the middle 200 pages they did kind of drag and i feel like that happens with a lot of domestic thrillers where it's just like the activities of suburban america <laughs> they're not the most interesting thing but nevertheless i still enjoyed the story and i liked the ambiguous ending but i feel like i wish it would have been more concrete based on the type of story that it was I think the ending is effective, but I maybe would have liked it better if it was something else. So I gave it a 3.5. If you don't like ambiguous endings, this book is gonna drive you nuts. And I don't think that's a spoiler because I would like to know the type of ending a book has without knowing how it actually ends because ambiguous endings usually annoy me. Also side note, this was the book that helped me reach my goal of reading all of Sherry Lapina's backlist as well. So a guide to Sherry Lapina books will be out very soon. Next, let's get into my four stars. One of my four star books is Layla by Colleen Hoover. This book is so weird. This book is weird. It's weird. Many times when I was reading this, I was like, what am I reading right now? Like what is actually, like is this actually, no, oh. Oh, so that, no, like that's actually happening right now? I was shaken and stirred for the majority of this book, but I don't know if I actually enjoyed it. Basically, this is a paranormal romance about a guy and a girl who start dating and they're loving life and they feel like they're meant to be. And then one day, Layla, the woman in the relationship, gets into a horrible, tragic situation and she's severely damaged. So her boyfriend takes her away to the place where they met to try to get her to rejuvenate and it's like this bed and breakfast, but it is super haunted and a ghost starts interacting and maybe trying to replace Layla and take her man. <laughs> so it is a love triangle between a woman and the guy she's dating and a ghost. It is um, weird, definitely. I've never read a paranormal romance before, but after reading this, I'm like, do I like that? <laughs> like, I don't really know. If you like Verity, I feel like you would like this because it has that like weird, unexpected, what the hell is happening element. It's also pretty dark and twisted. It definitely has like, um, poltergeist vibes because the story is being told like retroactively while the couple is talking to a paranormal investigator trying to figure out what is going on. And I really liked that aspect of it. I think it's a lot more effective than if it would have been written like sequentially. But overall, I just, I don't know. I couldn't give it five stars, even though I had a really fun, thrilling time reading this book because I just don't know. Like I still don't know if I actually enjoyed what was happening. Although I don't think you have to be happy or technically enjoying a book to give it five stars. Sometimes a book just makes me really uncomfortable and think really hard about something. And that is a five star book to me. And this kind of is falling in that range, but it's not a five star, it's a four star. And I don't have any more thoughts about this book. It's so weird. Another four star book I read this month was The Dinner List by Rebecca Surley. This is the author of The Last Five Years and I really enjoyed that book when I read it. It was definitely not marketed well and it kind of like set me up to believe it was a romance when it was a friendship story. And I feel like this book does kind of the same thing except it wasn't marketed as a romance so it's way more effective. This is another book that has like a magical realism speculative element and I found out that I really really like those kind of books. So all the rest of the books I had to talk about this four star and my two five stars that I've yet to talk about, they all have some sort of magical realism speculative 
element to them. Again, if you have recommendations for that kind of book, please leave it down below. I'm so into this right now. Is this the gateway to me reading fantasy? Who knows? Stay tuned. So anyway, the dinner list is about this girl and she walks into her birthday dinner and sitting all around the table are the five people that she would want to have dinner with dead or alive. You know how that's like a common question, who would you want to have dinner with if you could pick five people dead or alive to have dinner with, who would it be? She walks into her birthday dinner and boom, it's those five people who she always said that she would want to have dinner with, including literally Audrey Hepburn. So it's a really interesting kind of scenario. And she's basically walking through all of her relationships with these people and why she picked these people. And one of them is her ex. So they're kind of going through their romance and one of them is her best friend. So she's kind of talking through her relationship with her best friend. And it goes really deep into this main character's relationships and her reasoning for picking these people and how that might be based in trauma or other different motives inside herself. And I really thought it was a very interesting character study and the method that it took into exploring this character's motivations and thoughts and emotions through the five people they would wanna have at dinner. I just thought that was a really cool concept and it was really well done. I also loved the friendship piece in here. I think it's so important to consume literature about friendship. Like romance is totally a thing, but I think friendship romance should also be a thing. Like I just love reading about friend relationships, especially adult woman friendships, because I feel like those are really hard to maintain, especially if you grow apart from people and you try to meet new people. Like it's just so hard as an adult woman to maintain a lot of healthy friendships. So I really liked that commentary in here as well. The romance, hearing about their relationship was, and the thing that made me go from a five to a four star, lowering my rating for this book was because I did not like her ex at all and I was glad that they were no longer together. The dude was honestly kind of a dick and I didn't like him, so I think she was better off. Overall, it was a four star. If that main man, her ex, would have been like a amazing guy though, this could have been a five star book because that ending would have really, really got me crying. But that didn't happen. So four stars, still recommend it. I feel like nobody's ever talked about this and I really like it. Also, it's really short. I read this in a day. So now we are finally to my final five star books that I read this month. I absolutely love both of these books so, so much. The first one is The Midnight Library by Matt. Oh my god, I just hit myself in the face. By Magic. <laughs> and this is another like magical realism type of book. A woman is very depressed. She has a lot of regrets about her life and she's considering actually ending her life because nothing is working out for her. And when she attempts to do that, she doesn't die. She is transported to the Midnight Library where she can walk through this library and every book leads to a life that undoes one of her regrets. So she can see all the different ways her life would have panned out. And I loved exploring all those different avenues and different lives she could have had. It made me think of my own regrets and how my life would have worked out if I would have undone some of those regrets and would I have actually liked my life better? Probably not. So then do I even regret it? Probably not. This was a very therapeutic book for me, although there are tons of trigger warnings for mental health. If you are feeling fragile right now, I would not recommend reading this. But if you're just someone who likes to read about mental health like I do and kind of dig deeper within yourself, I think this would be a wonderful book for you to read. It is super intriguing, beautifully written, and I can't speak highly enough about it. Five stars. And the last book that I read this month was actually the first book that I read in January. I started reading this on December 31st and finish it in the first couple of days of January because this book is actually set on New Year's Eve. So Una, our main character, was born on New Year's Eve. It's her birthday. Hello? Do you have something to say? Okay. 
So when the clock strikes midnight, to turn the year into 1982 and to turn Una herself into an 18 year old, she wakes up and she is not 18 and it is not 1982. It's like 2020 and she's like super old and she doesn't know what's happening. And this ends up happening for the rest of her life where every year at midnight on her birthday slash New Year's Eve, she gets transported to another year of her life. So not only is she a different age every year, she is also in a different era and a different decade. She has to adjust to everything going on. You know, she's with different men, she's with different friends. She kind of has to like leave herself clues because she lives her life out of order. And it's just all about Una and her life and how she goes through this like weird scenario and adapts to it and how she makes friends along the way. And even though she tries to kind of like fix things going forward, she doesn't necessarily do that because things are laid out in a plan for her how they're supposed to be. And this just is another one that really made me think with that speculative element. Boba, you got to stop growling. I don't know who you growl it at, but it's better not be your mother. So overall, I really, really enjoyed this book. Five stars. This was another one. Just these two books. Oh my God. They are very similar in the way that they have like time travel elements they're about like regrets and the way that you live your life and how everything's supposed to be on this plan and it's a continuum and it's laid out for you so if you try to undo it or you like mess with your regrets like things are gonna work out how they're supposed to so just leave it alone and love your life and live your life yeah these two books are amazing if you take any recommendation from this video read these two books also even though these books were literally amazing and two of my favorite books i have maybe ever read that was not my top book of the month and i feel like i have to mention it golden boy was my favorite book of the month my favorite book of the year my favorite book of possibly ever literally my favorite books go pretty girls golden boy like it's not even a question so i read that book like i said in the beginning of the video for reading jess's favorites again i will link that video it is so good if you want to hear my full thoughts and review go watch that but other than that nothing other than that nothing those are all the books i read this month video is over that is my wrap up for january thank you so much for watching this and hanging out with me don't forget to like this video if you liked hanging out with me as much as i liked hanging out with you and subscribe to my channel if you haven't you guys thank you so much for 1k by the way i never imagined that this many people would want to listen to me talk about books so thank you for hanging out i really love you guys so much and i appreciate you watching my dumb videos i will see you guys in the next one Bye.